Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about handling integrals such as these two examples. They both have this form where we've got an exponential function e to the power f of x, f of x being some function of x, and it's multiplied by the differential of f of x, f dash x or f prime x as we say. And you can see this in this first example because we've got e to the power x squared. x squared is our function of x and if we differentiate it with respect to x we would get 2x. And you can see you've got 2x then multiplied with the exponential function e to the power x squared. And in this second example we've got e to the 4 sine x. So f of x is the 4 sine x. And if you differentiate 4 sine x you get 4 cos x. So again, it's got this particular form. So when it comes to handling integrals like these that have this form, we don't use integration by parts. It's a special result, as I'll show you. And the best way I feel that we can understand this is just by taking, say, y equals, let's say, e to the power x squared. And if we were to differentiate this, we would need to use the chain rule. So if we're using the chain rule, we would have dy dx equals dy by dt times dt by dx. And I'd make the substitution that t equals x squared. So we end up with y equaling e to the power t. So for dy by dx, let's just put it down here dy by dx, we need to do dy by dt first of all. Differential of e to the t is e to the t. So that's going to be e to the t, t being x squared. Okay, And that's all multiplied with dt by dx. And if I differentiate x squared with respect to x, then you're going to get 2x. And if I just rearrange this, we'll end up with 2x then times e to the power x squared. Now notice then that if I differentiate e to the power x squared with respect to x, I get this result, the same as what we have here. So when it comes to integrating this result, it must be this exponential function, e to the power x squared. Plus, let's put in a constant of integration. Plus c. Now that seems to suggest that when we've got something that has this form, that the result is just the exponential function, in this case e to the power x squared. So with this one, does that seem to suggest that if we were to take y equals the exponential function here, e to the power 4 sine x, and differentiate this with respect to x, will we end up with this result? Well, again, we need to use the chain rule. And so this time, what I would have is let y equal e to the power t, where t is 4 sine x. And using the chain rule here, then, we would have that dy by dx would equal dy by dt. So that's going to be e to the power t. In other words, e to the power 4 sine x. And then we need to multiply this by dt dx. So if you differentiate 4 sine x with respect to x, you end up with 4 cosine x, 4 cos x there then. And if I just rearrange this, put the 4 at the front there, exponential function e to the power 4 sine x, and then we've got cos x. And can you see? Yes, it does work. So the integral of this must have been the exponential function e to the power 4 sine x. And then we'll put the constant of integration in, plus c. So it does seem to suggest that if you've got an integral that's got this form, then the answer is going to be the exponential function, in this case e to the power f of x, plus the constant of integration. So let's just take this idea further. 
I'll call this example one. Now what happens if we've got basically the same integral only the constant changes? We should know by now that having a constant in an integral means it can be taken out the front of the integral sign. So let's suppose then I had this example where we've got the integral of x e to the power x squared with respect to x. Then this is much the same as the one that we had here. Only if I have the integral of 2x e to the power x squared with respect to x, then if I pull a half out the front of the integral, a half of the 2 is going to be just x e to the x squared. And these constants don't affect the integral. I just end up with a half then, and we know the result of this. It's e to the power x squared. And we've got our constant of integration, plus c. So we have this example here, which I'll call 3. And what happens now if I've basically got the same integral here, only the constant has changed? So it must be based around this result here. I know that if I was to differentiate e to the power 4 sine x, I would end up with essentially this integral, only it will have a 4 in front of it. And because it hasn't got that constant 4 there, I can just multiply it by a quarter, so that a quarter times the 4 would give me e to the power 4 sine x cos x, if I were to differentiate this. OK, so it's kind of just taking a stab at the exponential function, differentiating it, see what constants you get, and then just putting an adjustment in the front. Now I've got three more examples that you might like to try that are based around then this concept. So just pause the video and have a go at these three examples. And when you come back, I'll just give you the answers. OK, well, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, with this first one, OK, we can see that we've got our exponential function, e to the power x squared. If we were to differentiate x squared, we'd get 2x, which is basically the same as what we've got here, something x. So what we don't want is the 2. So we end up with 3 over 2 times e to the power x squared, plus the constant of integration then. So can you see that by differentiating e to the power x squared would give you e to the power x squared times 2x. The 2's would then cancel and leave you just with 3x e to the x squared if you differentiated it, that result there. So obviously reversing the effect, the integral of this must have come from differentiating this. Now, in the next one here, again, we can see that by differentiating 2 sine x would give us 2 cos x. Everything's the same except the constant. And because that is the case, all I need to do is just put my exponential function down, e to the power 2 sine x, knowing that when I differentiate this would give me a 2 at the front, 2 cos x, and then I'll have e to the power 2 sine x. I don't want that 2, so I just put a half at the front. OK, and that will be our answer. And for this one, differentiating 4x cubed would give me 12x squared. So what I need is that constant 5, but I don't need the 12 that I created, so I can divide it out by putting 5 twelfths. Then I have my exponential function, e to the power 4x cubed, and plus c. So I hope that's given you some idea anyway on how to handle this type of integral, okay? We don't do it by integration by parts. 
it is this particular form. Okay, it's a special one. So always get in the habit of checking that out before you rush into your integral. Okay, check out to see whether basically you've got a differential of f of x up here being multiplied with e to the f of x. If you've got a constant in the front here, then you'll need to make an adjustment, okay, as we did in these last three examples and in examples two and four.